to another unboxing. This time we have a package from Pen and Sword. They've got a few retro writers on their books now and several other volumes that retro gamers may be interested. And this one is by someone who is also a writer for Retro Gamer. I want the remaining freelancers from the original Retro Gamer. And the writer of this book has contributed quite a few articles over recent years. So we have... Curious Video Games, a compendium of rare and unusual consoles, computers and coin-ups by Lois Packwood. See the side there, White Owl, jacket design, Paul Wilkinson. The story of video games is often told the successive rise of computers and consoles, from names, famous names like Atari, Commodore, Nintendo, Sega, Sony and Microsoft. But beyond this familiar tale, there's a whole world of weird and wonderful gaming machines that seldom get talked about. Curious Video Game Machines reveals the fascinating stories behind a bevy of rare and unusual consoles, computers and coin-ops. Like Kim Tanktik's 1970s war game computer made out of calculator parts, or the suite of career-exclusive consoles made by car manufacturer Daewoo. Then there's a Casio Loopy, the RDI Halcyon, 1985 Laserdisc machine that could recognise your voice, and the Interton VC4000, a German console made by a hearing aid company. There are tales of missed opportunities and there are tales of little-known triumphs. Featuring exclusive interviews with creators, developers and collectors, Curious Video Game Machines finally shines a light on the forgotten corners of video game history. And as I say, Lewis Packwood has been writing about video games for roughly since 2013. His work has appeared in The Guardian, Retro Gamer, Edge, Eurogamer, Warframe, Rock Paper Shotgun, Kotaku, PC Gamer and Games Radar Plus, among others. He contributed to the AR-enabled book Convergence, how the World Will Be Painted with Data by VR Evangelist and Forbes columnist Charlie Fink and his chief editor of the video game website, A Most Agreeable Pastime. So let's have a look inside. Curious video game machines. To Kitty, Lottie, Arthur and Rory, you are wonderful. Nice dedication there. And then there's long list contents and a foreword by another friend of mine, Damien McFerrin, editor-in-chief of Time Extension website. Note from the author, fascinated by weird and wonderful consoles for a long time. Because of the obscure nature, often there is very little information out there. I made a huge effort to ensure that the facts and figures included are accurate and from reliable sources. So there's a timeline, a mainstream timeline on the left here with Famous machines and the curious timeline on the right with the less well known machines. So let's have a look at the start. How to make a war game out of calculators. Picture by Chris Crawford, who went on to more famous things. Time terminals, real time battles, paper maps used to keep track of play, Atari's forgotten consoles, the home Pong console. Home Pong arcade machine there, Super Pong, Home Pong, Ultra Pong doubles. The video music device, saw a very interesting YouTube video about that recently. Atari Video Pinball dedicated console, featured flipper buttons on either side and a paddle control on top. The Stump Cycle home console with a rotating throttle and pictures accredited. Intertom Video 2000, cassette number two, Badminton, the VSS-01 from East Germany, Intertom VC-4000, Dusk Cassette Program, Dusk Cassette Program, Super Play 4000, Astronic MPU, the grandfather of the Game Boy, the Microvision from Milton Bradley, there with the game Blockbuster. Let's talk about how that worked, some early Mattel Video games there, Merlin and Simon, Touch Me from Atari, and then Chris Bowman, the collector, showing his microvision, of course. Then we got Game & Watch, Atari VCS, which we use the, the computer would have been used as a development kit, talking about various things, Wildfire. Electronic pinball game from Gary Kitchen, famously worked at Activision. Atari VCS dev kit, which plugs into an Apple II. 
Yugoslavia's open source computer. A Galaxy Xijia. Self assembly, so there's one fully complete and modern equivalent. The RDI Halcyon. One of only a handful left, apparently. Of course, the laser disc Dragon's Lair was incredibly impressive. 30 centimeters across, the laser disc was twice as wide as the DVD. And then the video disc system. Fire for RDI Halcyon showing planned games. But unfortunately, he disappeared. And Ben Heckendorm, who's done quite a lot of work with obscure consoles and testing the voice recognition. The Enterprise, available in 64 and 128K versions. Very British computer. Clever idea so it's compared to its competitors there. The Micron Mouse, and then the Elan Enterprise brochure boxed example, which looks very similar to the later Amstrad CPC, rear of the case, video ton, based on similar hardware, and Enterpress, Hungarian Enterpress magazine, any colour as long as it's pink, the Super Cassette Vision Lady, the Masters and Girl and the Casio Loopy. So some more short-lived consoles, the Super Cassette Vision Lady from Epoch, Master System Girl from Tech Toy in Brazil, and Casio Loopy, which came in its own pink version. A console made by a car company, the Daewoo Zemix 5, CPC88 model of the Daewoo IQ1000 computer, which is an MSX based. NEC PC Engine Shuttle, also from Zoix. Zoix Turbo. Tank of the Famicom. So we've got the Scorpion 8 and the Scorpion 16. Video Game GT Dendy Jr., one of the most famous. A sub Famicom in the shape of a Batman car. A Power Player Super Joy. That one's got a keyboard. Dendy Games, the video games on VHS, so the Action Max Video Challenger and other formats. So there's Action Max Games, Video Challenger, Light Gun, Hatchet Toy, doubled as the Light Gun, Captain Power Toys, VCH, VHS tapes there, Video Driver. Viewmaster Interactive Vision, another one that used videotapes. Static grabs there. And of course, some of the early interactive games came back when the CD format came around, when the noodles came to life. Barcode Battler. Scan the barcodes. Variations. Additional cards available for Battle the Two. Barcode Battle the Two merchandise. Cards for the Barcode Battle the Two. You've got some with the machine as well. And the Hologram Cowboy Who Travelled Through Time, Sega's Time Traveller. Projected the game in front of you. Other holographic based games. DVD version of Tra Time Traveller available, so you can experience it at least. There's an advert. Virtuality, one of the earliest VR systems. Sit down or stand up in a loop, and you can actually see one of those at Electric Computer Museum in Leicester. Later, HMD Dynavisor, Second Life of the CD32, which had some strange uses after. So there's a, an arcade cabinet and there was interactive consoles at museums and similar. Prop Cycle, the arcade game. Famously, the Dreamcast conversion was cancelled. The 
avatar machine. Augmented reality device there. Acknowledgements, recommended reading, end notes. So there's extra footnotes to chapters. And there we have it. So, great looking book from Lewis. Some fascinating rarities in there. In fact, it makes a very good companion piece to the recent Game Up Over from Craig Turner, which you could also find unboxed on this channel. So, that's another book to add to the Retro Shelf. Keep watching the channel for more unboxing Retro Shelf merch stand and gameplay videos.